All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Thank you all so much for joining me today. It is a beautiful Monday, Monday, July 31st. I am very happy to be here with everybody. Another work week begins. How's everyone doing? Great question, JD52WTF. Love seeing everybody in here. It really is a, a beautiful Monday. We got some nice weather this weekend. Got to do a lot of stuff outside. Uh, got to have an amazing tournament on Saturday. Uh, and uh, and now here we are on Monday, you know, final final day of the month. Whoops, this is supposed to be 31, not 21. Might have to correct that one other spot. <laughs> 29th was the tournament. So, you know, the 29th is like a date that's special in my head. It's really uh, in my head. We got Jam MJRAKS in the chat as well. And of course, old friend of the show, AMO Alex is here saying, what's up, what's up? How's everybody doing? Pretty good tournament matches this weekend, I gotta say. Uh, we got to go three matches in the in the Momin Golden Spamfish lineup. So that was pretty epic. I was really uh, happy to see that. And Muhammad and Ress, Ress was like cruising through those models, but Muhammad was able to kind of slow and steady and, uh, and get through those. So if you haven't had a chance to watch those yet, be sure to check them out. Uh, definitely some good matches this past Saturday. As always, guys, let me know if anything sounds out of line. Everything sounds good to me in my ears, but uh, if anything does sound out of line, just let me know. Just, uh, you know, go into the uh, into the chat there and let me know if anything sounds sounds wrong or sounds out of line or anything like that. Uh, let me just do a quick housekeeping issue here. I want to make sure that I've got this pointing to this. Okay, done. Boom. Sahil is here. What's up? What's up? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. AMO Alex saying that we sound five by five. So beautiful, beautiful. Let's get into it here today. Today we got two CAD speed modeling challenges for you. Going into the bank, finding some older challenges from uh, back in the old days, 2021. Uh, reviving them, making some slight adjustments so it's not exactly the same model, but some oldies but goodies. I look back at some of these old challenges and I think to myself, man, I really... Uh, I really made you guys work hard in the old days. I had some uh, some pretty tough challenges back then, so it's good to go back through and see them again, get a little inspiration for the tournament challenges as well. I think we need to work some sheet metal into the tournament challenges. I don't think we've had any sheet metal yet, so I think we're going to start seeing that coming up here in the next couple of weeks. You know, it's always one versus one in the tournament, so um, it's not like it's unfair if I throw a new thing in there because, you know, it's really just you versus your, your opponent. So just look out for uh, those upcoming challenges with sheet metal. We're definitely going to see some. And of course, as always, it'll be up to the wheel of fate to decide who gets the sheet metal challenges. Uh, but they are definitely coming. And Sahil says, yeah, we need some assembly and simulation challenges too. Let's go. Let's start really making it tough. Uh, we're not quite there yet with the tournament. Maybe someday we'll have an assembly tournament or a simulation tournament. Uh, we're not there at the moment. A little too much variance in the solvers on the different on the uh, different uh different cad software solutions some tutorials might be good i use pretty infrequently so the practice will be nice yeah yeah so the tutorials we're doing the tutorials here live on model monday um i could try to chop these up into individual videos there's also the uh it's not it's really not there yet i probably shouldn't even advertise it yet but on tutaltoby.com under pro tips there's a section for tutorials that's coming um this will be you know, this will be set up better. This isn't even a tutorial here, uh, this rename with precision, but I am putting together some tutorials there. And then of course you can check out the OnShape YouTube channel. I put a lot of tutorials on there too. So just depending on what you're using, I mean, the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel has plenty of tutorials as well. Um, this page here just kind of links to all those those videos, just a direct feed to those videos. But if we just roll back here a little bit, you'll see that uh, uh, there's some tutorial videos here i usually try to label them pretty clearly in the in the thumbnail i guess that you're right though uh jd52 it has been quite a while since we've been doing tutorials so there is a tutorial playlist on the Tutal toby youtube channel so if you just go there and check out the playlist you can find the one tutorials that has all of them the whole channel is a tutorial yeah, it kind of is lately you know during tournament season it becomes a little more uh just ads and hype and getting everybody ready for the tournaments. But there are a lot of uh, a lot of quick tips and a lot of tutorials throughout the channel, that's for sure. Guys, don't forget, if you like 
what you're seeing here, be sure to hit the like button. The, the current viewers are 10 and the current likes are 10, so we're perfect. We got a one-to-one -one ratio of viewers to like. That's what I like to see, so we don't even have to talk about the rest of this stuff. Of course, if you want to support a company that has always supported the, the community, the 3D CAD community, check out MySolidBox.com. They put together professional workstations for professional engineers. They've been a longtime supporter of this show, um, and uh, they also have just been a longtime supporter of the user group community. So if you want to support a company that has always been there to support you, check out SolidBox. They also, you know, the biggest uh, testimonial I can give them is that most of their customers are customers for life. So once you start working with them and see the treatment that they're giving you and see how much time they're saving you with configuring your workstations, it's just it's just such an easy turnkey solution. You're in, talk to your engineering department, talk to your uh, purchasing department, ask them if they wanna save time, not having to go to IT to tweak a bunch of settings in the BIOS. SolidBox will take care of all that for you. So check them out, mysolidbox.com. Awesome partner, very glad to know the crew over there. All right, let's get into the, the CAD speed modeling challenges for this Monday, July 31st. Welcome to everybody who's jumping in right now. You're just in time. We're just about to get started with the first challenge where I'm gonna show you a 2D print and ask you to turn that into a 3D CAD model to calculate the mass and to enter that mass in the YouTube chat. First person to enter the mass correctly in the YouTube chat gets the point for that match. The points are just fun right now, but who knows, eventually maybe they'll be worth something. Uh, the basic rules of this are that you can use any CAD package. Uh, so you can use, you know, Onshape, Fusion 360, uh, SolidWorks. You can use whatever you want. Miguel is in the chat, says, hey, waiting for these challenges. Nice. Miguel, what CAD are you using? Let us know. Let us know. Uh, so you can use any CAD package as long as that CAD package lets you input density. I know there's some CAD packages that don't have that option. Um, so, you know, it's good if you have one that does let you input density. Fusion 360, awesome. You're in the right place. Welcome, welcome. And make sure when you answer, you use a specified precision. But I think uh, today's challenges are all in one, one unit. They're not in decimal place, so you don't have to worry about it today. But in some challenges, you do. And the first person to answer correct in the chat wins. And these are the materials we're using. So if you're here for the first time, grab a screen capture of this. Uh, yep, J JD52WTF is already answering. Hasn't even seen the model yet. He's just lobbing out a guess. I like it. Uh, so here's the uh, the materials that we're using. The reason this is important is because if you're using a different CAD system, if you're using Fusion 360, your material densities are going to be different than these. So just take a minute, capture these, make some custom materials. I have tutorials on uh, how to make your custom materials or have one in Onshape. I don't know if I have one in SolidWorks or not. These are the default material densities in SolidWorks, but uh, if you're using a different CAD system, you might need to create some custom materials, uh, make a custom materials library so you can keep playing every week, so you can enter the tournament, and so you can just be as fast as possible. Hopefully everybody had a chance to grab a screen capture of those materials, and that way you know what to expect. The material density is also listed on the title block, so if you missed it here, it's okay, but this is always what we use. And finally, the advanced rules are, this is meant to be fun and good spirited. I will make mistakes occasionally and the Ivan exploit is permitted. So if you uh, if you know what the Ivan exploit is, you can use it. I don't know if it's applicable in any of today's challenges, but here we go. Let's get into it. First challenge is gonna go live here for everyone in the chat. So as soon as I show this challenge, your job is to grab a screen capture of the challenge and to try to turn that screen capture into a 3D model. So use like Windows Snipping Tool or Snagit, MW Snap. Uh, there's lots of snipping tools available out there and try to turn this 2D print into a 3D model. As soon as I show the 2D print, the challenge is live and the first person to calculate the mass correctly and enter that mass in the chat will be declared the winner and will earn the point for today. Here we go. This challenge goes live in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in X, 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 X grams? Sorry, JD52WTF, you entered in three place. But the good news is that here on Model Monday Live, you can answer incorrectly as many times as you want. It's the first correct answer in the chat that matters. So you can keep on modeling. See if you can find your mistake and then try again in four places. Yep, yep, that's right. You get more than one chance here on Model Monday Live. So what is the mass of this part? Uh, this model is mostly symmetric. That's a that's a note that you don't see in an ISO certified drawing. Uh, this model is mostly symmetric. So I think you can probably tell what that means by looking at the print. 
uh, most of this geometry is symmetric. So like if I'm missing a dimension on, you know, it's supposed to be on both sides and I missed it on one side, just understand that it's intended to be mostly symmetric. Obviously there's that uh, radius 13 boss, uh, circular boss that's on the left side of this thing that's, uh, that's not symmetric, but the rest of the model is symmetric. So take a look, uh, grab a screen capture, because I'm going to move on in the PowerPoint here. So grab a screen capture, uh, MMGS, plain carbon steel, density 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter, as is shown down on the title block. This is 23-01-07B, half sleeve, a good model, an oldie, but a goodie. A little modern twist on it, changed it up a little bit. And... Hopefully that was enough time for everyone to grab a screen capture. Sahil in the chat says, I want to be a chassis design engineer in the EV sector. Wow, that's good. Good on you, bro. Can you guide me? I mean, I think the first thing you want to do right now, even if you don't have that much experience, is just put together a, uh, a nice web page that represents examples of your work. I mean, that's really the best thing you can do. Put together, you know, put together a nice web page. You can look at examples of this. Look up, like, uh, 3D engineering uh, portfolio page or something like Google search, something like that. But even if it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be super elaborate modeling. I think that if you can just show people, you know, show your supervisor that you uh, that you are able to work the CAD system and you're able to create some, some models... And, uh, and also that you have some basic presentation skills. You kind of kill two birds with one stone there. So, you know, you put together a basic web page. It makes it very easy to see your resume. Um, you got to keep in mind that hiring managers are playing a numbers game for the most part. They're trying to get the information as quickly as possible. So the easier you make that for them, you know, you have like a really simple page that, that says, uh, you know, link to who I am, link to my resume, examples of my work that you can just send them, you know, maybe generate a QR code and put on a business card as well for when you meet people, uh, make it mobile friendly. You know, these things are gonna really help you to get your foot in the door and get to that interview stage. So that's that's the main advice that I give to anybody who's trying to get into the world of engineering. You know, you, you have to get real world experience. And so to get that real world experience, you gotta get your foot in the door. And so you really need to allow yourself to stand out a little bit. And one way that you can do that is just by putting together a nice, um, easy to access example of why this company should hire you. That's really what it is. I mean, if, if one person submits a resume and they've got, it's like five pages long and it's, they're super qualified, but it's just kind of, a, it's difficult to get through. It's difficult to read. And another person makes it very easy for the hiring manager to, uh, to understand how to contact that person, to understand what they're looking for, to understand what they're capable of, you know, that's, that's going to stand out. That person's probably going to get called back sooner than the person who's more experienced but just doesn't doesn't have the skills to convey that experience to the hiring manager. And then I'd say beyond that, it's all about like networking, you know, getting to know people that are in the industry that, that work at different companies. So go to users groups. Um, if you can, present at user groups. Like, again, you don't have to be an expert in CAD. You could be an expert in your field. Or even if you're just telling the story of like, hey, I'm a student. And I wanted to present just to tell you guys um, how school is, is different than how it used to be. You know, there's a lot of old timers in the industry. They probably would be really interested in, in how school and university has changed uh, compared to, you know, when they went through university. Um, a lot of new technology has been implemented in the education space that wasn't there uh, when the old timers went through. And so they might find that interesting. So even though, you know, you're not a CAD expert, maybe you do a presentation at a user's group and now you've got that that you can put on your resume, you know, like, uh, and, and also you're going to meet people at that user's group who maybe will help open some doors for you. So those would be the two big things. Like you got to make sure that you, your, your, uh, your CV, your portfolio is presentable and easy to consume. And you got to make sure that you, uh, you know, you network. You got to really get out there and network. You got to meet the right people. There you go. There's there's job advice from Toby. Hope you enjoy that. Or if you don't want to do that, the other thing you could do is just design your own 3D CAD tournament, right? Uh, get people from around the world to compete in your tournament and then use that as a resume builder. That's another way that you could get into, get into the sector. I don't know. Let's talk about the uh, World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling. Uh, the World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling is upon us. We had some epic matches this weekend. Golden Spamfish versus Momin. Went three matches. Golden Spamfish came out on top. So he's going to be going up against uh, Fabian. 
using Inventor on September 16th. Inventor versus On Shape, trying to make their way to the championship. In the blue bracket, we have Mohammed against Ress. Katia V5 versus SolidWorks, and uh, Katia V5 came out on top. Mohammed took it, so uh, both both uh, our SolidWorks users were defeated by other CAD systems. I, I didn't even think about that this weekend, but uh, yeah, so that was uh, the matchups that happened. So Mohammed is going to be going up against Juiced, the number one seed in the tournament on September 16th. That is a match you don't want to miss. Uh, next week, we got JMD using SolidWorks going against Mohammed using Fusion 360, and we got Jed. Walrus Gumboot going up against DB. Jed using SolidWorks. DB using Onshape. United States versus United States showdowns next week. Let's see what is this one also? United States versus India. United States versus United States. Very cool. Definitely worth tuning in for that one. Uh, that's going to be some good matches. Jed. Jed is a solid user who's been in the tournament before. He knows what to expect. DB is an unknown. Haven't seen DB compete yet. Only seen him in the leaderboard. So using Onshape. See what happens there. And uh, same uh, JMD versus Muhammad. I feel like JMD has been in here for a while in the chat. So I don't know if that's Jamie McDonald or if that's that's somebody else. Uh, but JMD has been in here for a while, I'm sure. Good music in the background. Yeah, this is a good song. This song gets you pumped for 3D CAD. So this weekend, we had some, uh, some pretty cool matchups uh, using some pretty cool models. I think I'm going to try and model one of these now before we uh, flip over to the second challenge for all of you. Uh, the uh, live stream today is advertised as some live on shape tutorials. So we are going to go through and do some tutorials. Um, this was the first model that uh, the Golden Spamfish and Momin tried to model against one another. I think this was the first one. Uh, and it was the Golden Spamfish who took this one down. Uh, this was the second model here, the Nas mount. This one was pretty fun to watch these guys go through. And this was the third one here uh, that, uh, that once again, uh, the Golden Spamfish went up against uh moment on so i think of the three this one definitely is the most uh complex as far as number of features go so i think this is going to be the one that i'll do today and we'll uh we'll see how this goes and then if anybody has any questions just let me know but uh as always whenever i try to create something in 3d cat i always start out by just kind of coming up with a game plan so i think to myself you know how am i going to build this model what would be the features that go into this model and I think that for me, I would probably start out by creating this shape as the base. And this is also how our runners started out. They started out creating this shape here, kind of the base shape. And then after that shape is created, then I think I'm going to be ready to move on to um, the second shape, which might be this vertical plate here. Most of the time, I split up my features into a lot of different features. So I probably would create this vertical plate here, and then I would go through and create this shape here coming down at an angle. So I would do that as three separate features. Then after that, I think I would be ready to create this circular boss up top here, and then I would finish off by creating this counter bore that's going into the model. So that's uh, something that I always you know, get in the habit of doing is going through and kind of unbuilding the part in my brain before I get started actually modeling it. So let me now take this uh, print, this 2D print, grab a screen capture of it, move it over to my second monitor, and now I'm going to attempt to create this model with this epic 3D CAD speed modeling music. So here we are in Onshape, a uh, totally free version of Onshape. I really like demoing this live just because I think it shows how fast Onshape is just as far as um, snappiness goes. A lot of times people think like, oh, if you have a CAD system that runs in a browser, it's going to be slow. It's going to be solving everything on the server side. Everything's going to be really slow, but it has not been that way for me. Certainly not with Onshape. Um, it has been very fast, very responsive. Um, so if you want to see this model that I'm creating right now, you can go to onshape.com slash free, uh, sign up for a free account, and then you can just search for this number, 23T05 Shaft Support, because it's in the public space. And so if you want to work with this model, make a copy of it, see how I'm building this tree, um, you have that opportunity with Onshape. It's like one of the, the biggest benefits of Onshape is how easy it is to share documents with other people. So that's just one example. So here we go. Uh, top plane, I'm going to press the S key and jump into a sketch. I'm going to press the N key to get normal too. I'm going to create that first sketch, which is going to have a line that starts here at the origin, comes across to 160. Uh, now this line is going to go up in this direction. I'm going to come back, touch the end point, come off of that end point with an arc here. We're going to come across here to vertical to that original point and then close that sketch off. And that dimension so even though I sketched that line and that line's at 134, this is something else I really like about Onshape. When I now go in and type in the uh, the, the driving dimension for that line, 
it just resizes. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's a little different from uh, the other CAD systems that I've used uh, as far as how it, uh, how it works um, in that scenario. So I'm just gonna select these two here to get them tangent to one another. I was able to use some feedback there to make sure uh, that they were um, that they were not tangent. I'm gonna pick that line there and press H, get those to be horizontal. We got Anton in the chat. What's up, man? Long time no see. Good seeing you in here. Welcome, welcome. Now I use the S key for everything. Uh, I use it a lot in SolidWorks and I use it a lot in Onshape. I use the S key for everything. And so with the S key, I'm able just to quickly jump to these different commands and I'm able to now specify that that has a radius of 55. And now S key extrude, and then I'm just gonna tab through here to the height for this base, which is a height of 20 millimeters. So there we go. That takes care of feature number one. Now for feature number two, I'm going to select this face here, uh, begin a sketch, and I'll just sketch a rectangle here like so. And that rectangle is gonna have a width of 120, same as the other one, and it's gonna have a height here of 140. And that takes care of that feature. Extrude, I'll tab through here and press the space bar so it goes the other way. Whoops, oh, space bar cleared the selections, dope. All right, gotta get used to that one. I keep thinking space bar is gonna activate that command. Uh, let's see here, this guy has a wall thickness of And it's gonna be this. I, pre I held my cursor over this one, or tabbed into this one and pressed the space bar, but it, space bar ended up, it's like a default command to clear selections in on shape. Uh, so there we go. And whoops, that's gonna be, after I cleared the selections, I also basically said like, don't merge the results. Uh, so now I'm gonna select this face here, begin a sketch, orient my view. We got Jed in the chat. Barely got it in. Barely got it in on this one. Very nice. Very, very nice. So now we're going to create a line here. This line just goes from this corner to this corner. It's like nice, easy uh, selection here. So very easy sketch here. And now we can take that geometry and extrude it. And that one is going to be 16 as well. And we're going to reverse the direction on that and merge it. Boom. Done. Now we can go to the... Uh, this surface here and begin a sketch. Now we can either begin a sketch here or we could create an offset plane at 15 millimeters. But what's cool is that in Onshape, it's really easy to create your geometry and then create uh, the, the extrude going at an offset. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna start. Uh, I started this circle by selecting this edge. I ended it by selecting this point over here. And now I'm gonna type in the diameter of 72 and see that fully defines that sketch. So that's a pretty nice workflow also, um, where you're able to just kind of in one pass to say coincident to this edge, coincident to this point, and 72 diameter, and boom, fully defined sketch. And so now at this point, I can do an extrude, and this extrude is gonna be uh, not, not starting from the uh, original sketch plane, but starting from an offset at 15 millimeters. So you can see here that now we're gonna we're gonna offset that over to 15 millimeters before we get started with the extrude, and then the extrude's gonna go to a depth of 95 millimeters. Let's reverse the direction on that and merge it, and boom, that takes care of that feature as well. And so now uh, now we get to create our rib feature. Now for the rib feature, we can create a plane. Uh, if this was a, a real world environment, not not just speed modeling, but a real world environment, what I would do is I would pick a planar face and a point, and then I would click the plane command and then see on shape automatically knows from my pre-selection that I want to create a plane par parallel to an existing plane at a point. So boom, nice and easy, very, very fast here. And now I'm gonna get into this new sketch on this new plane. Now this is a newer trick that I just started using recently, but it really works well. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go to intersection. And when, the reason I'm going to intersection here is because then I can choose this face and Onshape generates sketch geometry at the intersection of that face and my current sketch plane. And this face, and same thing, Onshape generates geometry at the intersection of those two. Now, I don't really have to worry about the extra geometry, like this line up here, this line up here. I don't really care about those. I can leave them behind, I could delete them. But the nice thing is that now it's really easy for me to just draw in a rib here that exactly touches off on both of those faces. Now, I know there's other ways to do that. You could do like, a, um, 
silhouette edge or uh, you know just an edge selection over here and make it coincident but i just think that that makes it so much easier because on the fly you can right away get those relationships that you're hoping for so it doesn't it's not always applicable but particularly with ribs that's like that's where i definitely use it the most when it comes to creating ribs um it it really does save you a lot of time. Now I got a nice point down here that I can reference to define the height to this rib here. So that height is gonna be at 30 millimeters. And then I also have this edge here that I can use to reference this rib here. Uh, that's gonna probably look a little bit better when I go to create a drawing. So just a, a little trick that I started using recently that I think really works well, that intersection tool, which is here underneath the convert entities tool or project convert use they call it use in on shape i know they call it different things in fusion and in solidworks um, but i always just think of it as convert entities and then this is intersection uh, which is you can use that at the 3d level too you can intersect two curved surfaces uh, but here i'm just using it at the 2d level and it's super helpful so now now that i've got that geometry i'm going to exit that sketch and i'm going to go into the rib command and use that that line that i just created just the angle line that's all i need for that rib and that rib is going to have a width of 12 and i'm going to use this extend uh path to pro or part to profile just just in case uh when you have a tangent edge like that i just think it's a good practice to do that so now i'm down to my final feature here all i need to do for this final feature is just create my circ my counter bore here and if you're a pro in on shape, you learn that when it comes to creating holes or counter bores, you can create them without having to pre-create points if you know about the um, uh, mate connector trick. So this is gonna be a counter bore with a diameter of 32, a counter bore diameter of 51, and a counter bore depth of 42. And then here where it says select points to place holes, well, I'm gonna click this button, select mate connectors, and that way I can just select this face and the counter bore lands right at the center of that face. That's like a pro move that you learn uh, once you start using on shape for more than, you know, a couple of weeks, you start learning like, oh, meat connectors, wow. Those can be used for a lot of different things. Very helpful. And so with that, now that I've got that model created, I'm going to go over to my material library. So right mouse button, assign material. And I've got a custom material library that I created. Uh, I do have a, a tutorial video on this on the Onshape YouTube channel. This is ABS. I'll hit the green check mark and let's go to our mass properties for this thing. And we're coming up with a mass of 997 grams. And if I look at my answer key, that is correct. 997 grams is correct. And uh, that is how you model that part using Onshape. If you were watching the tournament this weekend, if you if you wanted to play along with, but you didn't have a 3D CAD system at home, well, guess what? Onshape is free and it runs in a browser. So now you have a CAD system that you can use at home. I got a lot of tutorials on how to use that. Uh, and it's a pretty cool model. It's a fun model. There's lots of little challenges, like you know, creating the plane offset to this location is kind of a cool challenge for that rib. Uh, you know, creating this angled shape here, deciding if you're gonna do that in one feature or two features or three features, what's the best way to do that? You know, our runners kind of use some different techniques so you can see some variety if you rewatch that matchup, but uh, a cool little model there for sure. So if you like that kind of stuff and you're watching this live stream, we got 24 people watching, we got 15 likes. Let's try to get that like to watch ratio to match up at one to one. Smack that like button, it's very helpful. Uh, say something in the chat. Let us know in the chat what you're using for 3D CAD. That helps with the algorithm. And if you're watching the recording, leave me a comment in the recording. It's a great way to support the channel. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, you can always share and reshare as well. Take a screen capture of these challenges and share it out and say, hey, this is pretty cool. Every Monday, this guy uh, challenges everybody from the entire world of 3D CAD to see who's the fastest. All righty. And of course, if you want to get a hold of the softest shirt in the 3D CAD game, the black technical tips and tricks shirts are still available, limited quantities. I'm not sure if we're going to have the size that you need, but let us know in the order form and we will try to take care of you. Uh, limited quant, we're coming down to the end of the road on those ones and we're going to have some more available soon of a new design. All right, let's take a look here. This was kind of a cool challenge. Um, looks like uh, Sahil was, was saying, can't get the uh, that top hole. Uh, six pattern, uh, model the face issue with the lid model. We'll have to take a look at that one, the lid. It must have been back from the turn. Oh, the lid was from the uh, practice models. So yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. Maybe we can do that one as a tutorial sometime. Uh, let's see here, getting issue zero width. Yep, it can be a little tricky. Some of those patterns can be a little tricky. Anton, some technical 
problems. Yes, been there. Been there for sure. All righty. Let's take a look here. Let's take a look and see what people came up with on this one. So we got, what do we got here? Let's roll back a little bit. Looks like the first answer that came in was from JD52WTF coming in with 526. I think that's probably a little low. Uh, Miguel coming in here, 4062. Uh, then saying OPPS, oops, maybe. Uh, AMO Alex coming in, 3759. Miguel revising, 3752. Anton coming in, 3734. Lots of different answers here. Jet Hightower coming in, 3748. Uh, AMO Alex revising to 3751 grams, but it depends on 3D model understanding at the connection points. Okay, interesting. Have to take a look. And JD52WTF revising to 4186. Guys, let's see what the correct answer is on this. The correct answer is 3736. Did anybody get that? Anton got 3734. He got, he got pretty close. I don't think anybody got that. 3736. Wow. So nobody got it. I might have to model this one up and on chain. Maybe I'll do this one as the uh, as the, the live demo for the second half of today's today's presentation. 3736. Unless I wrote the number down wrong. Which is always possible. It is possible that I made a mistake. But for now, I think we're gonna give it to Anton for coming in almost on point. I think he's closest. 3734, 3748. Nobody got 3736, right? Three, seven, yeah, this is like one of the first times it's ever happened. I mean, and I think everyone came up with a different answer as well. This is pretty wild. So I'll model this one up. I'll tell you what, guys. I'll model this one up. Let's see if I can get it at 3736. And if I cannot, then I will apologize and give everyone a point today. I'll sacrifice some. I have a bunch of points in stock, so I'll sacrifice a bunch of my points. Uh, the McBobble says, does Onshape have certification test? Yes, they do. They have a certification program. Absolutely. And a bunch of free training, too, uh, in what's called the Learning Center. And a bunch of free training in what's called the Too Tall Toby playlist on the Onshape YouTube channel. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, we'll see. I'm going to come back and model this one in a minute. Let me grab a screen capture of this model here. Uh, turn off the chat. All righty. And let me grab a screen capture of this. Now we know what we're modeling for the second half today. And let me give you guys a challenge while I work on that one. I told you these old ones are pretty tough, uh, but I didn't expect everybody to get something different. All right, here you go, guys. Here's a new challenge for you. Challenge number two begins in. As soon as I show this, I'm, you're going to grab a screen capture. You're going to begin modeling. Here we go. In three, two, one, go. Oh, sheet metal challenge. Sheet metal alert. What is the mass of this party in XXXX grams? Tolerance plus or minus five grams. We got a lot of tolerance on this one. <laughs> What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? Uh, materials, plain carbon steel, density 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, this part is called post bracket. General notes, material thickness is 4 millimeters. Default bend radius is 4 millimeters. Most dimensions are to the inside material wall. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Most dimensions are to inside material wall. I just I have that extra dimension on there, so you can kind of tell whether it's to the inside or the outside. I don't know why I put that note in there. I guess because, like, the 132 and the 46. Yeah, those are the only ones it looks like. <laughs> Maybe there's 106 here. Oh, I guess I'm the 20. Okay, yeah, all right. All right, that's fair. That's fair. All right, so there you go, guys. Take a look. Good luck. Uh, this is this looks like it's a nightmare. <laughs> looks like it's going to be a fun one for you to model up. Sheet metal challenge, you can do it using sheet metal. You can do it using regular thin features if you want. You can do it using surfaces. You can do it using whatever you want. Four millimeter wall thickness, four millimeter default inside bend radius. Should say some of the dimensions are to the inside material wall. That's pretty clear. I think if you take a screen capture that, maybe make YouTube full screen and then take a screen capture. Should be able to tell if it's to the inside or the outside. This is a problem with sheet metal is that it's hard to create realistic looking sheet metal parts when you only have a limited amount of room and you want people to be able to tell if it's to the inside or the outside. So, Tobe world problems, right? Tobe world problems. All right, I'm going to forgo the, uh, the planned uh, material here and I'm just going to jump right into this model. So 
So for this model is tricky. Uh, there's no doubt this model is tricky. Uh, you can see here that there's there's some love notes on this thing, not tangent, right? It's not tangent here, it's not tangent here. So it's like, okay, it's not tangent, so what is it? Uh, you know, the, the the location of this this width here, so from here to here, is gonna be based on the intersection of this arc and this 14 millimeter plate here. So because of that, I'm I'm very tempted to create kind of the, the top, you know, looking down this the model symmetric. So creating this shape first, kind of like the top top shape. But I don't know what this angle is supposed to be either. So I'm not gonna know that until I have that uh, that circular boss in this one. Now this is this is kind of like what the models are gonna start becoming in the tournament. When we get to the round of 16, you're gonna get a lot more situations like this where the the geometry you know, needs to be created in a certain order before you have the, the features that you need. But fortunately, if you use a technique like I use where you just kind of uh, model one feature at a time, a lot of times you can just kind of hack and slash your way through it um, and, and still come up with the correct answer. So let's see if that's the case today. And, and what I mean by that is I'm going to start out by just creating geometry that uh, that, you know, that I know that I have. And that geometry that I know that I have is going to be this rear plate. So I'll create this shape here, probably just create half of it, but this shape here, because I at least know that I have all the dimensions that I need for that, that shape. I've got, you know, it looks to me like I've got everything that I need for that. I've got the location at the height here. I've got the location uh, where this 14 intersect is. I've got this radius and the radius is coming from the very center of the model. So I think with those dimensions, I should be able to create that first shape. And then I'm gonna kind of work my way out from there. So just kind of start with what you know, um, not always easy you have to sometimes take a minute and decipher the drawing and like i said we're going to see more stuff like this as the tournament gets deeper 21-03-07b dash half sleeve if you start using on shape the free version on shape you can search for this or the paid version if you use a paid version you can also search for this in the public space front plane begin a sketch orient my view i'm going to start out by creating a vertical line here that vertical line is going to have a dimension of 90 then I'm going to create a horizontal line coming off of that. And then I'm going to create a, another vertical line here or horizontal line, really. And then another vertical line here with a dimension of 14. Those are the dimensions that I know. Now, next, what I'll do is I'll create an arc. Um, and this will just be a three-point arc just here, here. And that arc has a radius of 100. And then what I'll do is I'll take this point and make it coincident to the origin. And there we go, nice, fully defined sketch. That's what we want. So a lot of times if you look at a challenge like this, uh, whether it's in the real world or whether it's in uh, just a Too Tall Toby challenge, you have to start out by asking yourself, what dimensions do I know? How can I create a fully defined sketch as my starting feature? Aaron C in the chat, what's up, Aaron? Welcome, welcome. So now we're gonna take that geometry and we're gonna use that to extrude our plate here. And that plate is gonna have a depth of 14 millimeters. All right, phase one complete. Now I know the, I know what this dimension is, the 95. And now I also know what this dimension is. I mean, I don't know what the dimension is, but I know that that geometry is locked down. So I think that my next feature I'm gonna create, you know, really what I would love to do is create this, but I don't, I don't know what this is gonna be yet. So I'm just gonna create my next feature here as a simple rectangle. And then I'll figure out what this, this cutoff here needs to be later on in the design. So let's go top plane, begin a sketch, and we're gonna create a rectangle here. We'll start here at the origin and come over. A lot of times when I'm creating a rectangle, I'll do something like this, like I'll lock in a coincident relationship, and then I'll just tab past that first dimension and jump right onto the second one. And that second dimension is gonna be 95. There we go. Okay, nice and fully defined. I'm gonna extrude that. That can go up to a vertex because I already defined the 14 height in that uh, previous in that previous sketch. So I can just go right up to this vertex here. Boom, that gives us our second feature. Now for our third feature, I think this is where I'm gonna create this circular boss in the front here. So this is gonna come down and then it's gonna be straight once it gets down to the bottom. And then I'll close it off like this. So I think for the third feature, I'm going to create that. This is where, you know, having a, a kind of like a de facto design technique of just making one feature at a time and not trying to combine too much can be beneficial. It just allows you to kind of think through a challenge like this. And sometimes you get these challenges in the real world. Sometimes people give you some, some weird models, you know. 
So this is going to come over. It's going to go up to that 14. Um, and then it's going to be an arc. That arc is going to have a radius of 60. And that arc is going to have a center point right here on the origin. So make those two coincident. Or at least we'll try to. Uh, what else did I get a coincident to? Something else? Let's see. Obviously, I have a conflict here. So let's delete that relationship. Radius 60. Oh, you know what? It's probably here. Yeah, look. See, I picked up a tangent over here. Not tangent. That's what it says on the drawing. It says not tangent. Okay. Let's try that again. So all I did was click on those relationships and then press delete on my keyboard to get rid of them. So now this is going to be coincident. There we go. Nice black geometry, fully defined sketch. And we're going to take that geometry and extrude it. And it is going to go up to vertex. And that vertex is going to be right here. Just take it right up to the origin and of merge everything together. Boom. There we go. That's beautiful. And what this means is that now I can pick this face, begin a sketch and create this geometry. So to this point, down to here, to here. Whoops, I think I picked up a midpoint there. And then that is going to have a dimension that goes from the rear of the part to the start of that chamfer at 50 millimeters. And so fully defined, remove, which is like a cut extrude in on shape. So remove, this can just go through all and part is really starting to come together. I'm liking it. All right, now I'm gonna pick this face, uh, begin a sketch, and create a circle here with a diameter of 85. And we're gonna take that, remove the rule, uh, remove through all. Oh yeah. All right, now we're gonna do a mirror. Now the default behavior in Onshape is mirror everything. It's like a, it's always like a mirror all. So mirror everything about this face. You can change that up at the top here. You can say, I wanna mirror a specific feature, but uh, mirror all is the default. So there we go, that mirrored everything. And now this face, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm gonna create a sketch of a circle. And that circle is going to have a diameter of uh, 13 times 2. It's got a radius of 13, so just 13 times 2. In case you can't do that math in your head. Just so you guys know, I totally could do that math in my head. <laughs> 23. And then this distance here is going to be from that plane at 58. And so now we can take that and we can do an extrude. And that could go up to surface. Uh, so you're up to face. So we'll take it up to this face here. And then we can finish off here using that whole trick that I mentioned in the last one. This time it's gonna be a simple hole. It's gonna have a diameter of 12 and it's going to be positioned with this uh, make connector option right there. Boom. And now this model has the material of plain carbon steel. So assigned material, use the Tutal Toby custom material library and plain carbon steel. And let's get a mass of this thing. 3736. Yes, Toby gets the point. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, it's a tricky one. I, I don't doubt that it's a tricky one, uh, but I am going to type my answer in the chat so that I can steal that point from everybody so I don't have to give out a bunch of points to everybody. Well, J thank you, JD. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, sometimes you run into stuff like this where it's like very close to tangent. I think that's probably the trickiest part about this model is that that is very close to tangent. This is very close to tangent. And we don't know what that, you know, what that width dimension is. It's just whatever it is, what it ends up being. You know, it, it's whatever it is when you come up 14 millimeters, you have this because this has to fit perfectly inside of another chamber or whatever. Like these things do happen in the real world. Uh, so it's good to good to practice these types of challenges because sometimes especially when you're retrofitting to existing uh, Geometry existing parts existing machinery. It's important to uh, You know, it's important to know how to kind of backtrack and figure out like what do I need to do to get that that arc? You know, I, what do I need to do to get that radius 100 arc to line up perfectly with the existing machinery? But to have that step there 14. I don't know. I don't know what that width is you know, let the CAD software figure it out for you. But sometimes that means you have to just take your time. I think what you can see there is that I really took my time. I really went one feature at a time, kind of got everything lined up. And then I was able to come up with the answer. This was a model that we rolled out in one of the tournaments. Um, and I feel really bad for the people who got this one because that's a pretty tricky part. 
not really that bad. I mean, I don't feel that bad. That's what I mean. <laughs> All right, we got some people coming in with answers here. I think we still have a few minutes before we call this one, so I'm going to just take a look at uh, some other stuff, uh, just taking a look at some of the chat here. Uh, let's see here. Dan is here. says, get in, Toby. Yeah, let's go. Let's get some. All right. Jed is here. Everybody's coming in with answers. I like all these answers coming in. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. We still got time. Oh, okay. That was the other one. Oh, I, thought I, I thought I accidentally revealed the answer to this one. No. I wouldn't do that. So in the world of Two Tall Toby, guys, I know that I've been announcing this for a little while. Uh, the uh, the new website is very close to being rolled out. It looks awesome. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of options for you guys in there. A lot of uh, fun little uh, completion type of, uh, of tools. Uh, a lot of tools to help you get better at CAD. A lot of tools to help you with the community, stay in touch with the community. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. Similarly, at the same time, I'm rolling out my Discord. Uh, so I'm going to have a Discord where you guys can stay in touch, kind of like the Too Tall Toby community Discord. Uh, it's on its way uh, as well. So we got some stuff rolling out here in the next couple of weeks, trying to balance that with the tournament and uh, and also with my journey learning on shape. So a lot to balance out here, but uh, we're making it happen. You know, it's no problem. I will remind you that if you go to uh, TooTallToby.com and you go to the calendar section, you can go to any events, any live events that we're having. Uh, I don't think I put today's event on here, but any live events that we're having, you can go on here. And when you get into these live events, like for example, on August 5th, we're gonna have the next round of the tournament. You can click on that event and then go down to the bottom and you can add that event to your calendar. So that way you get your notifications, your Google Calendar, your iCal or Outlook. That way you get uh, the notification right on your phone. It includes the link to that live stream. So you just kind of get the notification, boom, you can watch it on your phone or you can throw it up on the TV. Uh, watch it with the family. What better way to spend a Saturday morning than hanging out with your family and watching a 3D CAD tournament? Good times all around. So be sure to check that out. Um, we are taking a break on the 19th, and then we'll be back on the 26th. So, um, But be sure to join us this Saturday, the 5th. It's going to be awesome. Fusion 360, on shape, solid works. It's going to be a good time. And the tips page. I know I mentioned the tips page already, but I just will mention it again. I'm very proud of this page. I'm... Uh, this is really like it's it's slowly evolving into kind of a central hub knowledge base type thing. You can search this page. You can say, I want to search for display um, and then see what shows up for things that have to do with display. Boom. Look at that filtering through all these different options for displays. So you can search. Uh, you can more importantly, I think more probably more helpful. You can just use these filters here. So I only want to see tips pertaining to SolidWorks and I only want to see tips pertaining to features and sketching. And uh, that way, you know, you're able to go through here. Whoops, that wasn't meant to be a double filter. That way you can go through here and you can just see all the tips that have to do with features. Or if you turn features off, you can see all the tips that have to do with sketching. So um, really, really useful kind of knowledge base here, especially useful if you get new people on your team to join the company, make it a little bit easier. Any plans to do a Udemy style course coming in from JD? Yeah. I do, um, I still do live training. Um, so I do, I do offer live training. I like the, I mean, whatever, I like them both, but I like the live training. I like actually interacting with people, but because I'm doing the live training, um, like see, I have CSW peep cl prep class. I have like a refresher type class, uh, advanced tips and tricks class. Um, because I'm doing the live training, it is gonna allow me to set that up for some some more like automated uh, type of training. But what I'd really like to do is kind of have the, the best of both worlds where I can collect people from all over the internet, but then kind of have them all together with me in a live class. So I think we'll see stuff like that in the future. Um, you know, maybe like a, probably do like a bigger class in that format, you know, maybe 20, 30 people in one class. Um, and then, you know, take you through whatever it is that you wanna learn about, whether it's sheet metal or, um, assemblies or whatever it is that you want to they're not really listed yet i'm still doing like uh so jd's asking where are the courses listed they're not really listed yet if you message me on uh tutaltobi.com slash contact i mean there's a lot of different stuff that i can teach if your company ever wants some training that's kind of what i'm doing right now is just working directly with companies doing custom training so if you're if your company wants any training just hit me up uh contact at tutaltobi.com i got you know uh tech sheets spec sheets that we can share with your purchasing department if you want to uh if you want to get training at your company just tutaltoby.com slash contact we can get the ball rolling get that all organized and scheduled it's a good time we have a good time in training for sure uh eventually i'm gonna probably try to roll them out a little bit more like you said like a udemy style class but uh right now it's all live 
We do we do it live here. All right. I think that's pretty much it. I think we're at the end, guys. 52 after the hour. Let's see who gets the point today. Made it in sheet metal module. Nice job. Nice job. Possible to hide planes after the first plane has been selected. I don't I don't know if it does it automatically. I mean, you can just press P on your keyboard. That's how you hide planes quickly and on shape. So when you're when you're tearing through your models, you got these planes here, you just press P. That hide hides and shows the planes pretty quickly. I think that's how the developers kind of address that issue of the planes being shown or hidden. You just press P. Quick hide for all your planes. Question from John TL there. All right, guys, see here, we're winding down. 24 people watching still, 20 likes. Let's see if we can get that up to 24. T-Jack, no problem. Oh, hey, don't forget also, if you uh, if you want to uh, do any of these practice models, we got a lot of practice models. There's over 50 practice models on the practice models playlist. So if you like this kind of stuff, this kind of like challenging yourself with a clock, we got a ton of practice models for you. You can try out um, good stuff in there, good opportunity for you to test your skills and see how long it takes you. All righty, that's it. Let's take a look here. Let's see who's going to get the second point of the day. Let's roll back here a little bit and see what we got. So it looks like our first answer came in from... Let's see here. I was yapping away for a while, so... I can't remember which one of these was the previous. Probably... Right here. Okay. Okay. Look, JD five two WTF. He said, "Ah, I corrected. Got thirty seven thirty six. Nice, beautiful. All right, now we got AMO Alex coming in twenty two eighty for this next one. Uh, Jed coming in twenty ninety nine. Anton coming in twenty two seventeen. We got Jed Hightower revising twenty one nineteen. Incorrect thickness changed a few things. Last submission, maybe. That's okay. If you got more, it's okay." Jed Hightower went revising 2271. Uh, let's see here. And Anton revising 2232. Very nice. Very nice. Submitted five times. Very nice. Yeah, I like it. Cool. Let's see what the answer is. Correct answer is 2277. 2277. Plus or minus five. Who got it? Anybody get it? 2280 AMO Alex. Boom. AMO Alex gets the point. 2280 is within plus or minus five grams of that answer. Felt like five grams was a good amount considering different CAD systems are going to maybe do things a little different. I mean, it shouldn't be that different. I'm not doing like a, a specific rip or anything. The clearances up in the corner should be pretty uniform across the different CAD systems. So 2277 should pretty much be spot on. Uh, very nice to AMO Alex. Guys, let's give AMO Alex a GG in the chat. He's going to get the point for that second one. Congratulations. And let's see if anybody else got it there. 2217, just a little... Little low there from Anton. 2119, a little too low. 2271 from Jed. Really close. Not quite within spec though. Sorry, bro. 2232 from Anton. Revising. Nope. Outside of spec. All right. Looks like it's Alex and Alex alone. Very nicely done. GG to Alex. And of course, everybody in the chat gets a GG today. Uh, you guys did awesome. Everybody who competed today did a great job. Let's see if we're back here. GG to everyone. I think we went offline there just for a second. Sorry about that, everybody. GG, GG, GG to everyone. Let me turn off the, uh, or go on to the next slide here. Yes, congratulations to our winner. GG to all. We are back. That was a little bit of a minor glitch there in the system. A little glitch in the matrix. And of course, thank you to the most amazing chat ever. You guys truly are the most amazing chat ever. Timon1 is in the chat today. What's up, Timon? Welcome, welcome. JD52WTF says, love the content, love the format, GG all. Thank you very much for that. It's a great way to start your Monday, right? Right before lunch, you go, go out there, get some cab practice, see if you're the fastest in the chat. AMO Alex is indeed the fastest in the chat, and he's going to be in the tournament here in just a couple of weeks. So, Alex, good luck to you in the tournament. Coming up. Oh yeah, Jason O is here. What's up, Jason? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget this Saturday, we got the round of 32 green bracket featuring Jed, who's in the chat today. You guys can wish Jed good luck. Good luck this Saturday, Jed. And DB, using on sheep. And of course, 
JMD using SolidWorks going up against Muhammad using Fusion 360. Good luck. Good luck to all of our runners in this epic tournament. Next week is Monday, August 7th. Uh, we're going to do Model Monday Live next week. I don't know. I think we're going to do it. I might be a little bit jammed up for scheduling next week. Um, I do have actually some training coming up here in August. So, you know, we, uh, we got to make sure that we leave ourselves a little bit of room for that. But uh, hopefully we're going to be here next week as well. Regardless, we're definitely going to be here Saturday. So I hope to see everybody on Saturday. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. Happy Model Monday Live to everyone. And I will see everyone either Saturday or next Monday. See you, everybody.